bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Get ready for an amazing topic tonight. Get ready for an amazing show. We are here with our guest, minister, mission, evangelist. Excited to be here. Amazing woman of God, missionary Jane Gray, and sister Inez Acevedo. Tonight's topic is from the bottle to the Bible. We thank God for all of you who are in the house tonight, Alabama, Dallas, Texas, Arizona. We thank God, South Africa. We thank God for you being in the house tonight. Tonight's topic is going to be amazing. Thank God for you. They're in the studio with us tonight. It, uh, when will God introduce you? Praise the Lord. I'm missionary Jane Gray. I am our outreach coordinator at Love and Unity. I wear several different hats. I also, um, I'm also a part of our praise team, and this is Sister Inez Acevedo. Amen. Introduce yourself. Amen. Um, I am Sister Inez Acevedo. I uh, also wear many, uh, many hats. I am the church secretary, head usher, head um, beautification, I uh, oversee the welcoming, altar call, whatever, fundraising. Uh, likewise, I'm also on the praise team. So I just, on the outreach also. So I, I wear many hats in the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, women of God, for Amen. being on tonight. You know what, listening audience, we want to thank God for you, Bishop Maurice Johnson, all Amen. the way from Kansas City. Amen. 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 God bless you, man of God. God. God bless you. We love you very much. Yes. All those who are tuning in, tonight's show is amazing because we have a woman of God who God sent her to the ministry and yes. she began to, when her testimony is so amazing, she said, I was a functioning alcoholic, yes. yet yes. going yes. to church, but God did something in her life. Mm -hmm. Missionary Gray, talk to us about what it is. What do you mean? What is a functioning alcoholic? Mm. Someone that's able to continue with their everyday life, your everyday life in the midst of um, drinking, drinking. Wow. And, and still able to go to work, still um, able to take care of my kids and do the things that I need to do to survive, although primarily... I was an alcoholic. Let, let me ask you a question. Being a woman in society now, especially, and our parents taught us that women shouldn't drink, mm -hmm. what caused you to go down that path? Well, and for, let me ask this question first. How many people do you think who go to church today are functioning alcoholics? Mm -hmm. I know that it's a high percentage. I, I would say that it's above 80%. Wow. I would say it's above 80%. And also, Bishop, you mentioned that um, parents, mm -hmm. parents said that it's not ladylike <coughs> to drink. Mm -hmm. I wasn't taught that. Mm -hmm. I was taught that it's okay. I mean, and, and that's what I saw as a young girl growing up. I, I saw a lot of partying. I saw a lot of drinking. I saw a lot of cursing. I saw things that was not ladylike. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why do you think alcohol was a solution to problems that you faced and that you were going through? Well, now I found out that alcohol wasn't the solution. What I was doing was putting a Band-Aid on wow. all the issues that I had. Uh, anything that would go on would lead me to drink. If I had a bad day, that was a reason to drink. If, if someone did something to me that I, I didn't like or said something, that was a reason to drink. And whenever you feel like you were going to have fun, that was a part of drinking. Mm -hmm. Everything that you did was, drinking was involved in my everyday life. Sister Acevedo, mm -hmm. this was your best friend. Yes. What did you see and experience when you came to church and you had to leave her there? What was that like? It was hard. It was definitely difficult because we had shared so much and we, you know, we knew so much about each other. The thought of having to be separated from her was devastating. 
Wow. Well, it didn't last for long. It didn't. <laughs> it, 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 did it, it didn't last long because I saw the glory of God and the change in her life with her us being like really, really close mm. friends. She was the closest person to me at that time, and she was pushing me away. She was rejecting me, yeah. it, although that's how I felt. Mm -hmm. wow. So I, I felt that I was being left behind. Wow. So, so let me ask you a question, uh, Missionary Gray. Um, being a functioning alcoholic, um, there any time at that, in that time when you were an alcoholic, did you attend church or any church? Or what was going on at that time? Yes, I went to church. I, I attended church. I was actually a member mm. at a church, and I was there faithfully, and I was there maybe for a good four or five years and never changed my life. No, 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 wait a minute. So wow. no one in the church knew wow. that you were drinking and that there were issues in your life and things you were suffering? Bishop, I have nothing against mega churches, but that's part of the issue with the mega church. You can just slide in and mm -hmm. you can slide out and you can, you, you're not being held accountable in any type yeah. of way. You have no contact with the leaders. You have, you, you have no accountability. Mm -hmm. and you can just show up and leave. You show up messed up and you leave messed up. Wow, wow. so do you feel that's one of the reasons so many people who attend church mm -hmm. today still drink? still overindulge because there's no one holding them responsible through the word of God? Yes, yes, I, that was me. I, I came to church and nothing convicted me. N nothing was said. No, I don't think I was even noticed. Mm. Um, I had no contact with the, the pastor or, you know, any of the missionaries, the ministers of the church. Wow. And when you're in a mega church, it's like, it, it's not... A family. Mm -hmm. it's, wow. it's not a close it's setting. A it's not a, yeah. that type of environment. Wow. It, even though you're there, you don't feel as though you are, you're a part of it. Wow. So I, I see now with your best friend at that time sitting next to you, that family and love and care came over into the church and, to, and then God saved you. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the things that happens when a person is an alcoholic? What does that look like? Is there anger? Is there frustration? What goes on? Um, it starts with me, myself. I wasn't happy with myself. Um, I was disappointed um, when it came to my relationships, uh, failed relationships. Um, I, I felt that I w wasn't a good mother. Um, I could have been a better mother than what I was, but... When you're drinking every day or every other day, you're not aware of anything else that's going on uh, around you. It's like you're in an unconscious state, and, mm -hmm. and, and that's where I was. Although I was awake and I was living, I wasn't living. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, was, I was dying. Wow. I was dying inside. I had no life wow. in wow. me. What are some of the things that happen that alcohol itself caused to happen? And let me tell you why I say that. Most people don't realize it, but alcohol is a, it's a substance that carries spirits. Yes. Sir. And the thing that gets me, individuals who still go to church, and I don't have. If you want to drink, that's your business, and I have. I can't stop you. All I can do is preach the word of God. But if you go to buy alcohol at a store on the top of the building, it will say alcohol and spirits. How do I know? I used to drink. And when I drank, I, I, I was a different person because I became the spirit of the alcohol that gave me commitment and power to do what I would have not normally done in my conscious or in my right mind. So did you ever experience that to where alcohol led you to places to where you, you could either got hurt or things could have happened? Yes, yes. There was a situation um, at one time when I was in a nightclub and I was asked by a friend, wasn't even a really close friend, um, for a ride home. And me being intoxicated, I'm, I said, yes, sure, I'll take you home. I never asked where I was taking him, how far I was taking him. My answer was just yes. I got in my car to drive, and he led the way. He told me which way to go, and I ended up 
in Watts wow. in the middle of a shooting. Mm. And that night I was shot. Wow. Wow. And, and the sad thing is, a lot of other things could have happened to me yes. as well. Yes. I, I, I could have been raped. Yes. Absolutely. I, I could have been beaten. Mm -hmm. I could have been killed. Yes. There's a lot of things that could have happened just for me being intoxicated and irresponsible mm -hmm. at that time. And I had family and I had children. I had people that was relying on me, people that I took care of that would have lost their mother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People always tell me, missionary, that, well, you know what, I just drink occasionally. I'm not a habitual alcoholic or I'm, I'm not a habitual drinker. Mm -hmm. or I'll just have wine. When you hear people say that in church, what comes to your heart and your mind? And I want to hear you, Sister Sabato, too. Well, I'm going to say, first of all, when you're intoxicated, when you have that in your system, the Spirit of God cannot dwell wow. inside of you. Amen. He cannot dwell inside of an unclean body. Mm -hmm. And so at that time and moment, you're connected. You're disconnected. I'm sorry. You're disconnected from the Spirit of God. You're no longer being led by Him. You're no longer covered by Him. So you're out naked. Mm -hmm. You're on your own. Exposed. With, you're exposed yeah, to the yeah. enemy, giving the enemy that window, that opportunity to come in and kill and destroy and do, just run amok and do whatever yeah. he chooses to do in your life mm -hmm. at that time. Wow, so what you're saying, then the enemy looks for occasions mm -hmm. to where we let our guard down. Yes. Yes. When you first came to church, before I go to Sister Acevedo, and you heard the scripture in Philippians, let this mind be in you, mm -hmm. which was also in Christ Jesus, and you really begin to get in God's word, what did that scripture mean to you? Knowing that intoxication takes your mind away from God, mm -hmm. what did that mean to you? Well, Bishop, I did not know it at that time, but because of, of the teaching and the studying, I, I come to realize that um, there's no way that you can continue to be in the spirit mm -hmm. and also be connected to God if yes. you're drinking. There's no Amen. way because that, that's, not, that's not of God. Amen. Sister Acevedo. Amen. Being a woman mm -hmm. who's married mm -hmm. to an elder now, yes, who God has called, Amen. have you ever experienced anything like this that you as a woman of God made you question marriage or made you, made you question whether or not God was really in your life? Yeah, you know, there were many times. Can you talk about it, elaborate? Um, well. Not all of it, but okay. just. That's like two hours. Because I know it's personal. I know it hurts. Yeah. Um, you're saying how did it feel or did yes, I know? Just how, not, don't explain everything, but just because God has changed things and yeah. things are better now. Yeah. But what did you feel being tied to not to be able like to control that. the family because of alcohol? It was, a, it was um, frustrating, very frustrating. Um, it was embarrassing. Um, it was, it was um, very disappointing. It, it, it did a lot to me um, during that process. Wow, wow. Yeah. And where did you find victory at? I found victory in his word. The only thing that kept me together was the word of God. Wow. Literally, that was all that kept me together was wow. his word. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. um, missionary Gray, the topic tonight is from the Bible to the Bible. Um, and when I was listening to you this morning in Christian education, there seems to be a sense of urgency in your life to be compelled to move closer to God's word. Um, did being an alcoholic, is that the push? As Paul said, I press. Where does your press come from now for the word of God? My press comes from disconnecting myself from what I would say the world. I, I disconnected myself from any and everything that was not like Christ. Wow. The, anybody or, or any friends that I had, any family members, mm -hmm. anyone that did not understand that God and 
Christ, Jesus Christ is a priority in my life. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not going to go backwards. I'm going to press forward. I'm going to continue to move wow. forward. And I, because I want God to enlarge my territory. Wow. I, I want him to bless me. I want him to bless our ministry. Yeah. And so that is my complete mission is to build the kingdom of God. So I cannot look back. Mm. I have to keep pressing forward, and I'm really right. eager to do that. Wow. I'm, I'm just, I'm happy where I am. Um, God has changed my life completely. I've mm. never, I thought I was living when I was in the oh. world, but he has just, he's put a different type of happiness, a joy, yeah. and a peace inside of me that right. people just cannot understand. Yes. You can't That's understand right. it until you're there, yes. until you're with him, mm. until oh you wake up every morning and you think about how lost you were, yes. how depressed you were. Mm. I had things, and those things now are just things. There's nothing tangible oh, yeah. in this world that can touch where I am in Christ. Wow. wow. And, and I'm, I'm, just, I'm just blown away with the peace that he has given me. Yes. yes. I know right now there are people on here who, who won't, turn in, won't turn into this Thank broadcast. Thank you, Jesus. They're not going to listen to it because there's no way you're going to tell them they can't drink. Mm. There's no way you're going to say anything. They... There are people right now who won't tune in because the topic, and I did the topic on purpose. I didn't want to put a subliminal there to make people think we're talking about something mm -hmm. we weren't. Mm -hmm. I wanted to come correct. And this, this just proves the point that a lot of people say, well, I can drink. I don't have a problem. Uh -huh. What were some of the things that went on when you drank? Mm -hmm. What happened? What does that look like? Well, well, people think that the only sins is those Sins like we spoke about this morning, Bishop. The only sins that that is not just uh, fornication, uh, adultery, and those idolatry, those type of sins. There's other things that comes along with drinking. There's anger. Mm. There's frustration, mm. unforgiveness. Wow! All these things. You you hold a grudge. Yes, you You're even. God cannot dwell in our temple, which is our body. We are the church. There's no way God can dwell inside of a body like that. Mm -hmm. So people want to think that it's okay, but you're not in the spirit. There's no way. There's no way that you are There's in no the way. spirit and you're walking in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And it's not just drinking. It's the things that come along with drinking. Yeah. It's what drinking leads to. Yeah. It leads to bad decisions. Oh, it leads to yes. disappointment. Wow. It leads to embarrassment. Wow. It, it does so much more than just, it affects more than just you. Uh -huh. It affects the people uh -huh. around wow. you. Yes. It yes. affected my family yes. and my children. They mm -hmm. st it still affect them to today, some of the things that I did. Wow. The drinking and the driving and the, the partying and just being, not being there for them. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot that comes along with that. Wow. wow. Sister Acevedo, wow. Yes. seeing her now and seeing her elevated, and we know she can preach. Amen. But seeing where she came from, you were in the club with her. I was. To sit right here now next to her. Mm hmm do you believe that God can do the impossible? Absolutely. Talk about it. I, <laughs> I, have, I have seen this woman go hard in the paint when it comes to alcohol and what things um, have led to it. I've had to pull her off a couple of, of individuals at her mm -hmm. most angered point of being mm -hmm. set off. She was like a little angry pit bull. She was <laughs> <laughs> she playing. So... So I did, I did see her in her darkest times and to see where God had brought her, you know, to from where she was, I can honestly say that God can do anything. Wow, but fail. Amen. Wow. No, knowing now, Sister Gray, I want to, I want to swift and, uh, I want to segue from the bottle to the Bible. Let's forget the bottle now and let's talk about the Bible. Mm -hmm. What have you found in God's word that has become inspirational? To where the things that you needed in the bottle, you no longer need them now because you find them in God's word. You're like a walking Bible, like they said about Bishop. No, Sister Gray is a walking Bible. Mm -hmm. What have you found? 
I found that knowing the Word of God helps me through my everyday life, helps me through obstacles, real life real life obstacles when things come against me knowing the word of god you know what to do mm -hmm. you you know how to handle different situations you know how to walk away and say you know what i love you and god bless you mm -hmm. wow. versus mm -hmm. i'm going to take your head off mm -hmm. wow. because you know I, i'm i was always the type of person that um i was very defensive Mm -hmm. I'm always on the defense, and, mm -hmm. I, and, and that trait um, trickled down to my daughters as well. They're the same way, and, you know, I'm praying for them, but I have learned how to get through, how to get over day-to-day -day obstacles, things that come, and they're going to come, mm -hmm. the trials and the tribulations, mm -hmm. yes. and I keep pressing. Mm -hmm. I, I keep pressing forward. Amen. And and just relying on the word of God, it, it's saying. I mean, it's truly, Bishop, not just studying the word of God, but it's living yes. the word of God yes. uh, yes. to the point where you, I said, I surrender. Wow. I, I I give up. Wow. I cannot do this. Yes. I cannot do this on my own. Wow. And what? so I, I want the spirit to be in me and be led by the spirit of God at yes. all times. Yes. Yeah. In your opinion, what is the difference between, I heard you say this earlier, and I come from a larger church, not a mega church, but a larger church. What is the difference between a big church that's not family oriented and a smaller church to where there's a push and complete support? Do you feel that had anything to do with it? Oh, yes, because I, I like to learn. Mm -hmm. And the, the Bible and the mysteries of the Word of God is truly amazing. And just to see that how we spoke about it this morning in, in um, Sunday education, to see the Word of God come yes. alive, <laughs> just come alive yes. in, in your life. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and, and the more you get into it, the more you desire. It's like a craving, yes. a craving for the Word of God. Mm -hmm. I cannot let it go. Wow. I can't put it down. Uh -huh. I hold on to it. I rely on it. It's my food. It's, it, it's my breath. It's everything that I have in me wow. is from the Word of God. And, and me being um, a single, I, I don't have that emptiness inside. Wow. The word of God, I'm not saying that I don't want a husband. Don't get me wrong. Right. But what I am saying is that God is keeping me right, right now Amen. in this period of my life. Wow. I don't feel that loneliness. Wow. And when I do feel that loneliness, I know where to go. I know where to go to get that fulfillment, to get that peace and that joy. It's in the word of God. Amen. I want to ask both of you something. Do you think the reason some people are still bottle struck and can't get out the bottle in certain churches is because they're not actively participating? So then what happens is because you don't actively participate and kingdom building, and you're not kingdom minded. Kingdom minded, you go back home into the same state. So is that what you were saying in the bigger church? Because you were not a part of it. Yes, you did hear the preacher lecture or preach, but because you were not a part of it, that caused you to stay in that situation. Is that possible? That is true, and mm -hmm. and I found that to be the the most important thing. And that's what we do love at Love and Unity. Yes, when someone comes and they join our church and they've been consistent yes. and they want God and they're looking for yes. something, we're going to give them something to, to do. do. We're, yes. There's so much to be done in the ministry. Yes. We're going to have them usher. You can be a part of the praise team. You need to feel as though you are a part of yes. something. You're More a part time. of the body. Amen. You're not alone. We're with you. We're going to walk with you through this journey. Amen. Amen. How did you feel? Now, we ain't talking about the bottle now. That's over with. All right. How yeah, did, that's over. <laughs> how did you feel coming to a ministry and you're being pushed into kingdom mindness and greatness in God to where you can't just sit there? 
Now, now, and here's here's what my question is: If you would have still been allowed to sit there, do you think you would have still been slipping, dipping, and tipping? But since you're being pushed into the word, and you know you have to study the same thing, Sister Osmeo, because you on it, you text me during the week. Where are we at, in Christian education? Where's the scripture coming from? So, do you think that push that you're receiving keeps you focused? I would have to say yes. Okay, go ahead and explain yourself. I, I'm, you know, I wasn't, um, I wasn't a drinker or anything. That wasn't my the nature of my own demons, but the demons that I did have, I contribute to the ministry and support, uh, doing, you know, working and laboring, um, in the ministry, finding purpose in the ministry, um, and then growing based on the teaching gets me excited so and the more i get a clear understanding the more i go into fasting and praying and getting um what the spirit of god has for me and and getting understanding sometimes it's hard for me to hold it together uh, at home you know i'm going in you know i'll go in in my car it don't matter it, because i'm so excited to know that uh, the things that I've endured in my own life that I'm able to grasp something that I didn't think I was able to do. Can I say something in your regard? Mm -hmm. When you first came to ministry, mm -hmm. you say, Pastor, I can still spell the marijuana mm -hmm. when I'm driving down the street. Is it okay if I talk about that? Yeah, that's fine. And you say it's a struggle. It was. And I think that struggle was because there was not enough kingdom work to be done. Mm -hmm. We always talk about kingdom minded and kingdom principles. But I think kingdom work goes with that. It does. When you begin to turn your life over to God, mm -hmm. those, do those things still bother you now? No, mm -hmm. absolutely not. I, I can say that I can. I, it was funny you said that because um, maybe a day before, a couple of days ago, I had to pick my husband up. And there was two guys walking down the street. And they had one lit. And they walked by me. And I didn't even move. It didn't bother me. And that's when I began to praise God because I said, Lord, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm good. You know, yes. I was at a, a family function. And it was in the air. And I was good. So, definitely. Yeah. Well, so let me ask you a question before I come back to Missionary Gray. Amen. Why do people think, because we do believe in being saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues of the Spirit of God give utterance. Amen. We just talked about that this morning because yes. we're going throughout the book of Acts. But why do you think people feel, since I'm saved, I'm not going to go through anything? Where does that come from? That's the deceitfulness of the enemy. Mm. That's it. That's okay. I was just thinking that. So she just <laughs> took the words out of my mouth. That's all. It is it is a, a, a deception that the enemy gives us and tries to deter us. Right. Amen. So absolutely, they, they it's a deception. It's a, a de deception from the enemy. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, Missionary Gray, before we leave, God has called you and he has placed you in a position and placed you into office. Are there ever times that you're tempted to go back to the Bible? No. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm not even tempted. I, I think I spoke of it a, a while ago. There was some times, you know, uh, a couple years ago where I would go into the market and I would avoid walking down that aisle. Come on, take your time. Now it doesn't bother me and I don't even think twice about it. You know, there are certain situations where I'm with family, like I was just with family on an outing uh, last month, mm. and, you know, people tell me, you know, you can have a glass of wine. Well, you know what? I don't desire mm. a glass of wine. Mm. Mm -hmm. I, I don't desire to feel that way yeah. anymore. The What I'm feeling right now, I want more of. Wow. I want more of God. I yes. want more of his joy. I'm mm -hmm. just, I'm content right wow. where I yes. am right yes. now. And hoping that God continue, and I'm praying that he continue to dwell in my life, and I'm going to continue to press. Amen. So the last two questions as we get ready to close. Um, some individuals deal with a reality of that, you know what? I know it's Communion Sunday. I'm not going out because mm. of wine. <laughs> the Lord's blood. Have those people really been delivered since the grave? Mm. I'm not going to show up because they got the wine there and, and, and the sacrament. And even though we pray, that's wine. It's going to tip me. Is, is, are they saying the right thing? No. No, because I'm, I'm never tempted. 
and I'm not just spo- I'm not just speaking of me. When you're delivered from something, you're able to be in that place. You're able to walk down the aisles of the, the liquor, and you're able to have dinner with people that have a glass of wine. You're able to function and not have that craving and that desire to do so. Okay, great, great, great. Sister Paul said, I'd rather be like him, laugh out loud, being like Jesus. Mm -hmm. The Bible said there's no temptation that is common to man that God cannot make a way of escape. Mm -hmm. So God would not put you in a situation that he could not bring you out of. Yes. You believe that? I believe that. So he wouldn't put you around things that he know he delivered you from. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the things that people say are self-induced because they want to make themselves feel greater or better. Would you agree with that? I agree. Mm -hmm. Amen. I agree. I'm going to let you both have final words as we close out. Well, I just want to say, you know, I thank the Lord for being here. I thank you for listening. And just know that wherever you are, whatever things you are um, trying to be delivered from, he will make a way for you to be delivered. Don't give up and don't don't stop the push. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I would like to say to those that are struggling, and even those that are not struggling with the liquor and the drinking and the beer and the wine, if your desire is to get closer to God, if your desire is to be moved by the Spirit of God, you got to make a break. Mm -hmm. You, You have to make that break. Because we spoke about it when we first came on. Our bodies is the temple Mm -hmm. of God. And if you want the power of God and him to dwell in your life, he cannot dwell inside of an unclean Mm -hmm. temple. Amen. Amen. As we close, um, how much does the word of God make a difference? Mm -hmm. I have to ask that. The word of God is everything, everything. to me. Right. It's, it's everything to me. Difference. He is my Lord. Yes. He is my Savior. Yes. And I, I'm just, I'm so, so thankful yes. that I am not where I used to be. Amen. Wow. I'm, I'm just, I, I cannot stop thanking wow. him Yeah. <laughs> that I could have been lost. I could have been one of those that did not find their way. And people are dying. People are losing their lives. As we sit here today, people need God. And and we have no time to play. Mm -mm. We need to get out and we need to touch people. And we need to tell them about God and his grace and his goodness. Amen. Amen. We want to say thank you from Real Talk Broadcast Network for tuning in tonight with us. You have been on with Missionary Jane Gray and Sister Inez Acevedo. And we thank God for them coming on tonight. And man, their comments and their views are of their own opinion, yet they trust and they serve God. We want to ask you to please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to YouTube and type Bishop Robert Johnson. And in typing Bishop Robert Johnson, please subscribe. Also, don't forget our Real Talk blog. The Real Talk blog (laughs) is really blowing up. And God are doing amazing things. Amen. Go to the Real Talk blog, blog www.realtalkbishop.com. Amazing articles. Amen. Also, please stop by and visit again our church, yes. Love in Unity, in the city of Bellflower, Bellflower. California. www.loveinunitychurch.org. And make sure that you are part of our Twitter channel. Because you can also see and hear clips of these amazing women there tonight. Amen. God bless you. We love you. In Jesus' name, thank you for being on with us. We love you. God bless you.